Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's May 5th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, in Missouri, a multi-day filibuster involving a landfill bill has the potential to put the entire state's budget in jeopardy. Missouri State Senator Rick Bratton, a Harrisonville Republican, spent more than four hours on Thursday alone blocking floor action unless senators agreed to take up and pass the landfill bill, which would require that cities within one mile of a landfill built be allowed to sign off before a project is approved. The filibuster, which sent the chamber into recess at 5 p.m. Thursday, comes as the Missouri General Assembly's constitutional deadline to pass a budget looms. Lawmakers have until 6 p.m. Friday to send the state's spending plan to Governor Mike Parson. Failure to do so would be a legislative disaster and force lawmakers to return for a special session. Moving from Kansas City to Kansas now, the city of Overland Park recently released the numbers for their spring mattress collection and recycling extravaganza events, saying that they were a resounding success, diverting more than 1,000 mattresses and 100 tons of waste from landfills. This spring, the city facilitated bulky item pickup for homes east of Antioch to properly dispose of unwanted mattresses and box springs. The city teamed up with Sleepy Head Beds to clean, sanitize, and donate items in good condition to families in need. The city collected 1,185 mattresses and box springs from houses east of Antioch in March and April. Additional collection dates for homes west of Antioch will be scheduled this fall. Ultimately, the city collected 85 tons of e-waste and 21.5 tons of paper waste at the recycling extravaganza on April 22nd. Moving over to Kent County, Michigan now, construction is underway on what the county plans to be their last active landfill cell, situated at the South Kent Landfill. Since it opened in 1982, crews have used the site to dispose of nearly 80 million tons of waste. With the addition under construction at time of writing, the landfill is expected to reach capacity sometime in 2029. In June, Public Works board members will review a proposal to construct a bioenergy facility, a venture referred to as a, quote, sustainable business park. End quote. If constructed, the facility would be able to convert an estimated 400,000 tons of solid waste into renewable natural gas and fertilizer while recycling much of what remains. Steve Faber of the Public Works Department said, quote, We know that 75% of what gets deposited in this landfill could actually be repurposed and reclaimed, and that's really our goal. End quote. Three landfills have already closed in Sparta, Kentwood, and North Kent. In Deschutes County, Oregon, a new attempt to mine methane gas from not landfill will soon get underway. Deschutes County commissioners have agreed to a minimum 20-year contract with Cascade Natural Gas. Director of Solid Waste Chad Sintola said the utility will expand emissions collections already underway at the landfill, saying, quote, Our current system at Not Landfill, we operate strictly for regulatory compliance. Cascade Natural Gas will essentially take over the operation of that system for gas collection, and they'll likely be expanding the field, adding additional gas rolls to the site. Their site will take that gas, clean it up, odorize it, and distribute it to the local gas distribution network in Bend here. Experts feel the additional methane collection could generate up to an additional $650,000 a year in revenue for the county. Vermont Governor Phil Scott made good on his promise and vetoed a bill this past week with the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions that come from heating and cooling the state's buildings. Said the governor, quote, when we pass laws, we must clearly communicate both the burdens and the benefits to Vermonters. From my perspective, this bill conflicts with these principles and I cannot support it, end quote. 
leaders of the Vermont House and Senate still hope to pass the bill, which they have titled the Affordable Heat Act and are organizing override votes. House leaders said last week they're confident they have the votes to override the veto. If lawmakers in the Senate continue their voting patterns on the bill, they too would have the numbers for an override. In this case, both parties need a two-thirds majority of those present to do so. According to the most recent data, Vermont's thermal sector emits more greenhouse gases than transportation or any other category, including electrical and agricultural sectors. Because of this, some Vermonters are voluntarily upgrading their heating systems to ones that pollute less, but no policy currently exists to ignite significant change. A recent pilot study entitled The Economic Potential of E-Waste Recycling in Minnesota found the state has approximately $2.8 billion worth of metals in their electronic waste stream every year. Even though over 266 million pounds of e-waste are available for recycling in the state each year, according to the study, only 23.7% of it gets captured. The study used peer-reviewed research reports and local data on e-waste to look at 62 different elements. The study found that projected job creation, if 100% of e-waste in Minnesota were to be achieved, is 1,738 direct jobs and a total of 3,345 new jobs. One spokesperson said, quote, Many people will put it either into their recycling bin or into the garbage, and either way, that's problematic. Because your municipal recycling facility that takes your recycling bin at the curb, they are not equipped to handle electronics. In fact, sometimes it can be dangerous for their workers. For example, a CRTV ends up in the truck, gets crushed, and that lead-laden gas can be exposed to the workers. End quote. At a 100% e-waste recycling rate in Minnesota, the study found the top elements by weight were iron at 40.6%, copper at 32.2%, tin at 9.6%, and aluminum at 8.5%. And lastly, New York City residents who don't separate their yard waste from the rest of their trash could soon start incurring fines of up to $100 from the city. The Sanitation Department held a public hearing on the proposed rule, the final regulatory hurdle, before it can go into effect. Under the rule, waste would be required to be kept in a separate bag or container from household garbage for pickup by the Sanitation Department. The mandate could launch as early as Memorial Day weekend in Queens, where curbside composting pickup resumed this spring. Next would be Brooklyn, where the rule would go into effect in October, where curbside composting pickup starts in that borough. The rule would affect Bronx and Staten Island residents in March 2024 and Manhattan residents in October 2024. If the requirement is enacted, the Sanitation Department plans to roll out a three-month education and warning period in each borough before summonses are issued. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for May 5th, 2023 presented by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can call them at 321-223-7500. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll catch you back next week for another Recyclist News Update.